Hello and welcome back everyone. We are nearing the end of a long summer road and as we come into it, we're coming into week 7 of the LJL summer split. I am Dr. No, I have been alongside every step of the way and it is the utmost pleasure to be, have been able to go this far with you all and while we're wrapping up these fine this last final week we find ourselves in a bit of a state in terms of the overall standings of each team of some of the stories that have come out from this split in an overall position of many different teams kind of going in different directions of what we might have thought our first and second place team from last split, Detonation Focus Me and Sengoku, both find themselves a little bit lower on the bracket than we might have expected. Meanwhile, V3 Esports came out with, ultimately, it felt like their dials turned up to 11 as they currently find themselves leading in the split 11 to 1. It's actually been quite a sight for V3 to really get up to this point. They only have dropped one game so far to the second place team being CGA. They dropped that in week five, which was Friday going into Saturday of last week, depending on your time zone. In what was a really close game overall. And I think that speaks to hopefully what we can expect out of some best of fives for those teams coming up. Now, to speak of the lineup for today, we're going to have the standings here up for you. So V3 Esports up in first place. CGA coming in at second with a 9-3. Sengoku Gaming 8-4. And Burning Core holding down fourth place. So one through four, on not going through any ties. But the main tiebreakers we're looking at for this week DFM and Hawks Gaming currently at 5-7, and seven, and Rascal, Jester, and Axes unfortunately are out of the playoff running. They, with only, two, with only two games per team left, they are not going to have a chance to make at playoffs. So, that doesn't dis disincentivize them from trying. I really think that Rascal, Jester, and Axes, Axes especially, has shown a lot of signs of life in the later half of the split and unfortunately came a bit too little too late for them and they weren't quite able to bring it all to the stage they they kind of suffered from having a couple rough matchups when they really found their stride and unfortunately were not able to pull it out all of that being said though I definitely think they are still formidable teams, and hopefully in the offseason, we'll see them undergo some changes or some practice necessary to come back stronger in the spring split, as overall, it feels like the overall quality of so many of these teams has risen so much over the course of just the past two years, it feels like. I always kind of look backwards towards... 2018 when detonation focus me found their first international win over kaboom esports and which was the first ljl win of these of the whole region so it was that was a sort of momentous moment or of we're putting ourselves on the map and we're setting ourselves up for greatness but we're going to take a quick break to look at the best play awards here Day one axes or day one With honestly what a great this was a great turn in their game against Sengoku They were able to pull it out and this was 
one of those moments that it's a good capitalization from hoglet i love this arrow and Pyrian. he opts into flashing there and forces out the cleanse from his ad carry and day one day one kites this one out so beautifully and it's it's always one of those things that i love seeing when you're looking at a player that is having his first experience up on the pro stage this was a game he got to sub in for on the super weekend and to demonstrate mechanics like this even in an online environment even when it's your first time up to stage always a comforting sight there Beautiful display of a little bit of Ash mechanics there with quite a high bit of attack speed, especially at that point in the game. And the last one. Next one, of course, going to Proud of Burning Cord. This is for week five. And this was the Tempered Fate that really helped them turn around this game and really was a story of the last few weeks of different teams putting Bard really into the highlight position. It starts off here with the R. And then you have a beautiful stun opportunity. This was actually a beautiful play because it's also followed up by Yuhi finding an arrow right onto the Aphelios. And this was Rascal Jester. You have an all-in comp on this Aphelios and Burning Core execute beautifully on the Aphelios to make sure that there's no amount of time you're spending where you're able to do damage, even through Lulu ult, not staying up long enough to get that play going. But those are going to be your plays for week five. We still have a couple plays to look at for week six. And honestly, what I do like a lot about that Burning Core play is, like I mentioned, the team play involved the communication to cat and the it's the tempered fate ultimate gives you a little bit of time to try and set up but burning core were ready to fire off at all of the correct points with just that short window of time that proud was able to provide for them and while we do have like a little bit of time left i wouldn't be surprised to see if we are seeing day one return to the stage today but talking a little bit about our schedule here up for today of day one we have detonation focus me versus rascal jester which is an important game to be discussing as far as detonation focus me are one of the teams that still need tiebreakers so DFM a possible move here if they are able to find this win and will be important to their standings and this is the rest of the schedule coming up here we're going to have after this CGA versus Detonation Focus Me then taking on CGA will be Sengoku Gaming and Axis Gaming versus Rascal Jester will be the last game of today and so I'm going to be returning to the normal schedule of doing these four games on day one but coming up for you tomorrow will be Sengoku Gaming versus V3 Esports. Then returning to the stage, V3 will be taking on Burning Core. And we'll be closing out today with Axis versus Hawks Gaming and Burning Core take versus Hawks Gaming. Running back to the stage there. And while we're looking at the standings here, or excuse me, while we're looking at the schedule, I want to talk about how this relates to the standings and the possible moves we will be seeing for today. So up first, of course, one of the important ones is going to be Detonation Focus Me versus Rascal Jester. DFM currently in fifth place. If they find... So they're obviously battling for their position against Hawks Gaming to see if they can move up one position in where, they, uh, where they're seated for playoffs. But they also have a slight potential to be jumping Burning Core here. Should they be able to go 2-0... They have a possibility to either tie with Burning Core if Burning Core go 1-1 one one, or beat out Burning Core if they go 0-2. Of course, Burning Core has opportunity to go 2-0. and 0. It would mean the same story for Hawks Gaming. So 
Dead Nation, focus me. We'll need to win this one out if they're looking to try and keep their playoff seed as high as possible. But that being said, expecting them to go 2-0 and in the week is a little bit of a... It's a little bit of a, a reach, it almost feels like. And it feels bad to have to say that sort of thing. Especially with a team as storied and historic as DFM. But this split has really been a struggle for them. And I kind of want to focus on the story of Detonation. Focus me for a bit. With Rascal Jester kind of having their own struggles throughout the split and currently out of playoff contention, I really think it's time we need to start being critical of De Detonation. Focus me as... Even after the the break weeks that we had leading into the Super Week, we didn't see DFM come back looking realistically any stronger than they are than they were prior. S still making similar draft mistakes, still making s similar disjointed team play mistakes, whether it's on ho at home or in person, and it doesn't seem to make that much of a difference now. One thing that we did mention is that DFM don't exactly seem to play very well on a home environment. But to even speak on the last time that these two teams faced off was also in an online environment. And that was one of Saros's worst games, I think, of the entire split for him. Possibly of the entire year, it was... Just a kind of, it was just kind of a mess of a game. I believe there was a point at which Saros went about 1, 6, and 7. And while doing a bit of VOD review of that game, it was a game that DF, DFM even had a really decent comp. Rascal Chester kind of didn't draft that one out the best. And when it came towards the later end of the games, they weren't able to close it out against that nation. Focus me. They were really able to utilize... Really, it was one of those games where draft matters, and that has kind of been a story that I feel like DFM struggles with overall, but there was a lot of times in that play where everyone did not seem to be entirely on the same page. There were times where Seros was satchel charging himself into five members and just getting completely eviscerated for it, but... When we say draft matters, it's really it really will be demonstrated exactly here while we get into our first draft here for week seven, game one. Coming up here, starting things off with a karma ban and a bard ban right off the bat. And while this is somewhat of a more recent development to be banning away the bard, it's a bit of an understandable one as many teams were able to utilize that one effectively. Now, for the side of DFM, we're possibly going to be seeing a couple other mid lane support bans tor given over to the side of Rascal Jester, as Pink has kind of had... I don't want to call it a crutch, because I don't want to take away from him as a player, but realistically, the only success that Rascal Jester seemed to have had as of recent was putting, in things on, putting on, him on things like Karma mid, like Lulu mid and things that weren't too susceptible to opposing team play. Now, Aphelios and Senna also going to be hitting the ban table, so Ash is making it through, but Set also is making it through. So I wouldn't be surprised if we're seeing a B1 onto the Set here, just as amazing flex potential gives you a few options. Volibear has also been obscenely posit uh, popular here, and I'm so glad to be seeing DFM drafting up the Set instead of the Bear. But this will leave Rascal Jester in the position to grab that one up. And it looks like they will be doing so. And that isn't to say that the bear cannot be used in pro play. I do still think it has some potential. It just is so susceptible to so many AD carries right now, and that's kind of in the story of why we see Volibear having the lowest win rate out of any jungler in the LJL. But on top of that, even just across the super week of weeks 5 and 6, Volibear had a sub 23% win rate. It was something a little bit below that, and it really comes down to 
the bear just does not work into a lot of the meta 80 carries right now. Aphelios, he cannot get into melee range of. Ezreal is a little bit too hard for the bear to lock down. And Ash just kites him out so hard. So I'm curious to see how Rascal Jester are going to try and protect the Vola Bear in this one while DFM locking in themselves in a Camille and a Galio, giving themselves a bit of dive potential here. I do like the way the comp is looking for DFM, but Rascal Jester opting for the Renekton in the top lane as a response to the Camille. So Kokok should have an okay matchup if this is the one that he's looking for. That being said, I'm a little bit surprised that we're not seeing any AD carry pickups in the, in the first half of this draft. And Rascal Jester banning away the Callista will really start to push push the teams to not or push the teams deeper into their champion pools. We did see Art in the last week pulling out his Caitlyn and did have a good amount of success on it. So I'm not, I wouldn't be too surprised if we do see the return of Caitlyn again, especially if Ash ends up receiving a ban here, but we'll wait and see what is in store for us. While DFM going to be banning away the Sejuani. And we'll wait on Rascal Jester for their next ban. And lastly, running that other one will be the Ezreal. So... DFM kind of have a choice here of what they're going to end up sending into the AD carry position. They still have a lot of flex potential from support to mid to top. Camille, of course, is kind of going to be the most secure top laner on this roster so far. But Galio can be flexed to the support position. Set can be flexed to the support position. As Karthus is going to be banned away here. Rascal Jester will have their last pickup in mind, and it's either going to be Ash or Caitlyn, and realistically, blinding either is fine. We have not seen Utapon on Caitlyn yet, but if Rascal Jester want to hold off their counter pick, it looks like they will. Drafting themselves up the Kennen here. And while Kennen hasn't had the the most impact in LJL pro play. It is still one of those heavy team fight tools. Can work very well into the comp that DFM currently have, where if you want to send this Camille and Galio combo in, if you want to be dunking a member into the back line with set there, I think Kennen can definitely offer a decent amount of deterrent from that objective. That being said, I like Kennen in this spot a lot more. And we'll get into that in a bit, but we also have Ash and Leona going to be rounding out the draft here. As Leona lends itself towards that dive style, Leona knows very well how to go in and go in hard. So it looks like Art is going to be bringing back the Caitlyn. Had a highlight play on it in that last week, so excited to see it here again. As it looks like Cogcog will be taking the cannon into the top lane into Evi, while Pink is going to be piloting the Renekton into Saros. He did have another game on Renekton, uh, I believe it was in their game versus CGA, I believe. Uh, it, he, it was picked into isolation in to try and neutralize an Akali pick from early on. Which does still hold its own merit, is not a bad pickup by any means. Yeah, it was versus CGA that he ended up picking the Renekton, and unfortunately they weren't able to clutch that one out. So, I definitely think that if you're DFM, you will be looking at that mid lane as a point of... As a point of aggression, because Pink, even on the Renekton when you're giving it to him as a counter pick it just has not seemed to suit him very well he's really struggled to find a lot of the picks he's been a lot of picks he's comfortable on and finding good value out of all of that being said though I definitely think that Rascal Jester have a decent comp in front of them they don't have a ton of defensive tools or at least tools that are explicitly defensive 
but they can make use of their comp in a defensive light. You can set up a barrier of Caitlyn traps, you can use the cannon ult from a defensive posture, as well as the bear and Nautilus can both kind of be used in defensive ways. I think the Renekton is definitely the biggest standout among the characters here. The sort of nice thing is that going forward into this game, you can send Renekton into the side lanes against Camille to at least hold out on the waves, and you can keep Cog where it matters, closer to the team fight. You don't have to worry about him being disconnected from the rest of the fighting, or if Detonation focus me, try to pull the trigger. You don't want to have the cannon teleporting in late, so Rascal Jester have some potential to be making this comp work. And I really think this is going to be a comp that for Detonation Focus Me is going to stress some of the issues that they have, or will be showing that they've patched some of those leaky holes. As one of the things that we've criticized them for is just kind of disconnected team play, where it feels like different players want different things. Or, when Detonation Focus Me kind of run into the situation where if DFM, if DFM feel like they can take an objective, they push very heavily for it. To the point of borderline running it down just because they, in their minds, that's the next objective that needs to be taken, so we are going to take that objective. And it's led them down some very rocky paths, even in their last game against Rascal Jester. So, as long as Detonation Focus Me are both cleaning up their overall team coherency, getting everyone on that same page, and finding a little bit of uniformity in action. I definitely think that DFM have a comp that can work for them going forward. And of course, with Rascal Jester on their one of their last two games of the split, I'm really hoping to see them go out with a bang. That will, of course, remain to be seen, and I'm hoping that possibly with playoff spots locked away from them, that DFM will show a little bit of sign of life. And I definitely think that I definitely think that they have opportunity to be showing it there. Excuse me, one moment. More. We're gonna wait for this match to get started up along here. I have to update the stream information, so let me go do that. Alright, going to update the stream information there for you guys. While we just wait the last couple of moments for the match to get started up here. And I do think this is also one of those games that has I hope this is one of those games where we're going to kind of see what DFM do as an overall team. Uh, and I did talk a little bit about coherency uh, and this uniformity that we have been really lacking from Detonation Focus Me. But let's also speak a bit on the side of Rascal Jester, as even though they aren't out of the playoff running, I think they're an important team to be talking about. But we'll get into that in game time. And getting things started up here, we do see fairly traditional runes pretty much all the way across. Art actually going for lethal tempo is kind of an interesting one. It does kind of show a little bit more aggressive patterning from the Caitlyn. Typically, we see the uh, the fleet footwork coming out from Caitlyn as just the little extra healing adds a little bit of extra damage to your poke. Not a bad deal. 
But I do like the lethal tempo as it does give you a bit more potency to fight. And when you do have a support like Nautilus, it's going to be something that's fresh on your mind. That being said, I do kind of hope that Hachimecha is coming into this match prepared and hopefully did a little bit of research on how to be utilizing the bear as overall the bear play in the past two weeks has left a lot to be desired and I have been, I've been vocal a bit before on exactly this, vol the Vola Bear's position in pro play but well, we're waiting for things to get started along here. It looks like Gang's going to throw out an early E. This is a little bit of a tough one to ask for, but they have a huge minion advantage. So Art's going to get chunked out very early on. Going to be forced to use a pot even only at level 1. Good aggressive start from the side of DFM. And it's good to get that kind of damage out early. It does give you pressure for that level 2. As you can see, Gain going a little bit for it there, but... Looks like both junglers are going to be opting for full clears. It looks like Hachimecha a little bit ahead of the curve in terms of clear speed and should be able to... Should be able to parley for each other's craps on opposite ends of the map. The sort of unfortunate part for now is... Hold on, that thought. Gang's gonna be going in here. Art's gonna burn his cleanse to just cleanse away the slow. And that's not a great position to start things off on the Caitlyn, especially as a champion that usually postures herself as the lane bully. Already gonna be forced to take it back here. Doesn't look like he's gonna be sticking it out for the wave. He will be backing and buying boots to hopefully help out on getting in and out of that that Leona E range, but we'll miss a quite a bit of minions for it. But ultimately, that will mean that Steel doesn't get a whole lot of value off of being on this bot side. No camps to steal away from the side of Rascal Jester, as well as no ga real gank opportunities just yet. The mid lane is shoved up. It is going to be bouncing back to him slowly, so Pink realistically should not be walking up to this wave, but... If he does, DFM are already here waiting in the wings, and... Yeah, like I said, the, the wave coming back up to him, so Pink is not in any immediate danger. While both junglers will just be settling on a full clear. There's a little bit of PvE going on on both junglers' ends of the map here, but not a whole lot of jungle information has really been established so far this game. Not a whole lot of deep boards early on, and... You can see that Yudapon did, I believe, spot Hachimecha out with a hawk shot. As a couple pings went out, so they know where Hachimecha is located. And what kind of path thing he is undergone, but... Kakak's gonna get a stun to deter any aggression up on the top side. Now, I do want to talk a little bit more about this objective coming up in about 20 seconds, because... It's usually, this will be one that I definitely think is going to kind of pass over fairly okay, but Evite's going to commit for this one. Does not commit the flash, though, and understandable doesn't, would really only force a flash for flash there, as Kog was going to be backing anyway in that scenario, but... Looks like Rascal just are establishing a bit of vision around this Drake, and what I was going to mention is that... In the past, both of these teams, and even in their matchup versus each other, the first objectives don't exactly, don't always undergo a ton of scrapping, especially with a lot of the champions on both sides kind of waiting for a little bit of damage items, but we do typically see objective trades coming out between one team trading one Drake over for a Rift Herald, but DFM has really been the ones to get better use of the Rift Heralds overall. So a fight might be breaking out here if they did choose to engage on the gang, but he's going to walk away, knowing that that pink ward is not exactly worth it, but he is going to walk right back over for it, so Rascal Jester is going to have an opportunity as gang's greeting out for this one a little bit. They're turning around. They don't quite want to make this call. Aceris does teleport back in the lane. It looks like they did get the call that he was level 6, and a good move to back away from that one before anything breaks out, but 
One thing I was going to say just about the objective plays overall is that I feel definitely like DFM can opt to trade uh, this first Drake for a Rift Herald. Is. Historically, DFM has just gotten much better value overall from getting uh, from Rift Herald objective plays. Rascal Jester's going to turn this one over. They are at a succinct disadvantage of how many members can rotate over. Evi has teleport, so Rascal Jester, knowing that, are going to back away. Did Art not actually walk out of lane with his boots? I believe, I believe that might have been the case. I think Art uh, undid the buy of his boots and did opt into a refill potion. And that means he wanted the movement speed for this fight if it does end up breaking out. But for with Rascal Jester under turret farming out that wave and trying to shove the next one in, it looks like this will be going over to DFM. First Drake secured for them as... That will typically mean that Rascal Jester are going to be focusing on that Rift Herald to try and keep pace in that objective race. And overall, as we're just looking across the lanes, Unipon has really gotten a lot of the better the early ends of this lane, especially after that level 1 play, but Pink's going to be going for a little bit of a play here. Steals a little bit close. I don't even think Pink saw him there. I don't see any Pings coming out, but I don't think Pink actually was close enough to see him, so Steel going to remain in mystery for now as... DFM are crusting into that level 6. Art does have cleanse again, so he's not too worried about this. Mm. We'll see how things go. As both junglers are really just enjoying a farm game for now. For now, it looks like Hachimeche is going to find Steel alone in the jungle, and he really can take this 1v1. There is a heroic entrance on the way, though, so... Really needs to be careful about how hard he is going to commit onto this one. But he does give a bit of pressure over to his top laner to hopefully try and keep this Camille under turret as best he can. But right now it's about establishing vision for that top side here as Evi is going to get the hero's entrance called in upon. And that's going to be Kaka going down. Sarah's happy to have happy to pass that kill over to his mid laner. So Evi is going to be the one picking up first blood there and that will mean that rift herald goes over to them as well and that's sort of the risk of sending kennen into camille she has that long range hook shot it's very easy to get starts find it up get, get oh geez i'm sorry i, I realized i was having a moment while hachimech is having a moment walking in just right into the loving arms of every member of dfm on that objective and this time, it was actually Rascal Jester being the ones a little bit too greedy for objectives. As Hachimech is just going to end up losing his life. Gang going to be the one picking up that kill. And So far, DFM going to be 2-0 and oh in this kind of a game. And we'll watch this one more time. This is just sort of the, the potential risks of drafting Cannon into this into a pick like Camille as he didn't even need the hook shot once he had the slow off the W you can cast the ultimate you're locked right in place for the heroic entrance knock up one full combo from Seros later and that's just going to be one less ninja entering for the world here but for now you're not exactly too worried if you are rascal jester those are two kills that you would rather not give over but that being said i definitely think that gawcog still is Kennen still serves Kennen's function even if excuse me even if he is 0-1-0 and, and it looks like hachimecha might be trying to give him a bit of pressure back over but ultimately he is just not getting a whole lot of poke out on this top side is just not able to exude the same amount of lane pressure or a really bully potential of other top laners playing Kennen here, but he is trying to trade a bit back over onto that trade, but Evi's still getting the better end of that one. 
Having refill and a biscuit as well means he is fairly sustainable up in that top lane. As for now, we're just going to enjoy a bit of a longer lull state. Realistically, DFM's comp is the one that has all of the pressure to make plays happen. Outside of 5v5 scenarios, looks like DFM are going to do exactly that. They're looking to make a play happen onto Kakog here. He will get stunned up after the face breaker, but will it be enough to stop him? Should be Hachimecha be able to make this a one for one overall? And will he take the fight with Steel? He blows the W, doesn't get slowed by the E, and it looks like Steel should just be able to walk away from that one. And meanwhile, in the mid lane, Aceros showing a few years of experience on the mid or in the mid lane over Pink to win out on a couple trades over there and then the top side they're just going to be re-fighting up again this is ultimately not exactly a huge fight that Hachimecha can be taking but I think oh that's going to be Steel actually winning that one out in the end just a bare brawled 1v1 he does actually have a completed Cinderhulk but not a whole lot of stat differential that was really just <laughs> I'm actually a little bit surprised that Hachimecha even died there. But that is just really the champ diff of playing a playing set over set over Volibear and Steel kind of say is Hachimecha asking, Who are you? Steel says, I'm you but better. And in the wake of that one, that's just going to be 4-1. to one. Detonation focus me in a lead here. 1.5k gold lead advantage. Not a bad position to be in if you are detonation focus me. So next Cloud Drake is up as well. And DFM looking for inside track onto that one. And Steel's going to spawn up the Rift Herald in the mid lane. You want to keep pink under turret, under turret, that is definitely a way to do it, but it looks like they're going to be going for possibly a play onto him. They actually could have gotten him if they did decide to shoot the arrow, but pink, of course, does still have flash. And we'll see if Hachime Hachimecha makes the same mistake twice. It looks like he will. The E flies in. This is going to be a long stun combo that the bear is just not going to be able to get out of. That's going to be another objective flying over to DFM. If this is how Rascal Chester choose to play out this game, there's not a whole lot you could really do about things. With Hachimecha just one by one, just walking solo into his own demise. And the rest of the team not having much action to show for it in its wake. These are the kind of games that Detonation Focus Me can really dominate. As... All of your lanes are doing perfectly fine. None of them are losing. I They're going even at, at worst. And you're really just kind of demonstrating yourself as the better team. And when DFM are in a leading position, they usually do okay with it. I'm hoping that it'll carry through, but Rascal Jester really are struggling to find signs of life here. Especially if you are going to be sending pink into the mid lane on this Renekton. A 20 CS lead is not making up for the kill differential or objective differential that you're having so far here. So Evi's going to go in onto Kogkog. This time it's a bait from Hachimecha, but here comes a heroic entrance one more time. Kogkog should be able to go down here as Seros is just going to keep Hachimecha locked up. Here comes Steel to just finish the job. And even when Rascal Jester think they're the ones setting up the plays, DFM... Or just seem to be one step ahead as Evi's going to get a bit of harass onto Pink while he's just showing up to pick up the wave. And another play going over to the side of TFM here. As the arrow flies out, Gang's going to be the one trying to lock up Gang Nagi here. He should have stun after the flash. Steel's going to find a two-man face breaker. That's going to be Nagi going down. And Rascal Jester are just far and away too slow to these punches. And DFM are really just running up and down the rift. 3k gold lead already on the table. 
And an Ocean Soul as well is really starting to put this one out of reach for Rascal Jester, unless they're start gonna start cleaning this play up a little bit. And ultimately, this was one of those things that I think Rascal Jester. When I talked about you know what happens in draft matters, this is exactly that matchup. You're the one who chose to pick this cannon into the Camille. You saw the matchup. And it's current, currently 0-3 into that matchup. You're the one who saw the Galio, and you decided to pick Renekton. You have a 30 CS lead, sure, but you're 0-0-0. Zero, zero, and zero. Versus a 2-0-3 oh, mid laner. He's happily made up that gold difference and possibly a little bit more in terms of how far behind he's setting your the rest of your map. And if you are going to be if you are going to be passing over things like the Ash and you know in favor of something like a Caitlyn you would hope to be seeing it doing a little bit better and of course you do have a little bit of you do have some early disadvantages or at least it was somewhat of an unfortunate play early on but you're really hoping that Art's going to be able to make the difference now I do think Art pilots Caitlyn in the later ends of the game very well and I do think he has potential to make that work for him as Steel's gonna just run right at Kogok. He's not gonna opt to complete the back. Kogok might have to force the ultimate or at least barrier, but with a solar flare coming in, there's nowhere that Kogok has to run. That's gonna be another kill given over to the Camille. And while Rascal Jester will be able to grab up a turret onto the bottom side, you're giving all this gold over to a Renekton that is really that is really struggling to find any value out of just being a gold sponge. Well, Hachimacha should get a stun onto Saros, but that's not going to stop him from going all in. He's going to find the knockup, but a good buffer from Nagi to try and get out of that one. Here comes Steel. He has no ultimate this time, but a good face breaker is going to pull in the Caitlyn, knock him down. Well, hook shot from Eva is going to find out the support there. This is <laughs> this is not looking like a good one for Rascal Jester, but. For the side of DFM, I definitely think that this is a great game. This is a great game to look at when they're winning. And although sometimes that's not always the best indicator of success, or at least of teams riding back, it does kind of look like they're at least all committing to the same plays as... Hachimech is going to commit for this Drake. He's going to have to engage in a little bit of a smite fight if he wants this one. Hachimech is going to turn his attention onto the Drake. Meanwhile, his mid laner is going to go down. Not even going to get the Drake in the end. This is disastrous for the side of Rascal Jesters. Not only are they going to lose the Drake that Hachimech decided to commit for, they're going to lose the Drake, or the two kills as well, and Cogcox is going to be the third one falling down here. That's just going to be a clean dive. DFM are just kind of wrapping this one up. As we watch the play kind of come along here, teleports in. This was just multiple members of the side of DFM all all here and ready to ready to really throw down. And it doesn't end up going nearly anywhere for the side of Rascal Jester. Especially after you're already committing so heavily onto a Drake that you know is going to cost you at least Hachimecha's life. Is it even really worth it to be committing for your first Ocean Drake of the game is really the question I have. So... In the wake of something like this... You gotta ask yourself, how does Rascal Jester have a chance running back into this one? And with how much they, how much split push threat DFM have in this comp, as well as just decent range of engage and mobility coming out from Seros in the mid lane. It's a little bit of a test of 
how Rascal Jester find a fight here? And at this point, it might be that they're too far out of the running to find it. Well, Hachimecha can't even run into his own red side here. Well, Kalkok's going to get looped on. This is going to be Steel finding an ultimate out. That's going to be a snare in. Or actually, going to buffer it through with the Zanyas, but not exactly like you have a whole lot of places left to run. Hachimecha's going to run in here to see if he can get anything started up. As Steel's going to be the one forced away here. Nagi with the flash forward onto that dredge line. This might be a fight here for a Rascal Jester. They're going to find one. How can they keep this fight going? Caitlyn is doing a great job of just keeping pace with this fight while Hachimecha is doing his best to lock up members. That's a lot of damage on the Nagi, but it won't be enough to matter. As uh, Ace in the Hole is not going to find out Caitlyn there, but... Rascal Jester really need to make a, make the most of this, and going for this Baron play is exactly what you need to do. It's a little bit risky, and they might not be able to complete this one through. SDFM decently have a decent amount of uh, HP to re-engage on that fight if anything comes down to it. Apologies, working on a little bit of hopefully solving some technical difficulty issues. As excuse me, that's just getting Kakak again bullied off in the side lane. All of that being said, though, I definitely think this is just going to be one of those games that Rascal Jester really struggle with as a whole and with Kakak being 0 and 7 a little bit of payback for Saros in the their in their earlier game of the year or of the summer split more specifically We'll wait to see what Rascal Jester are kind of able to make of this one as an opportunity is rising on its doorstep, but Saros has teleport, so he's not too far off if a play does break out. Right now, Rascal Jester really need to stop the bleeding in these side lanes, but at this point, it's a little bit too late, too little too late. Rascal Jester going to try to find a way in here to hopefully get onto this Ocean Drake. Hachimech has been willing to throw for it all once already, but Seal is just waiting to find an opportunity with his ultimate. That's going to be an R in. He should have a decent face breaker opportunity, but the heroic entrance just gives so much zoning. Kalkox going to throw down the ultimate, but he does no amount of damage that's going to matter. That's going to be at least the kill over onto Ash. as now the fight that breaks out will be a one for, no, one, for no, one overall. Kalkox falling in the midst of that one. If you aren't going to get out the burst potential of a, of a cannon, at least you get the damage out as Nagi's going to look for a little bit more. That's going to be Art doing his best to try and kite out on this one. Pops a cleanse for good measure as he's going to try to find a finish onto Steel. Steros is going to be the one that needs to go down next, but try, try, try as you might. Art is just not able to put this one on his back long enough as his front line falls and he is soon to follow. Detonation focus me just find their ocean drake ocean soul here And that's definitely a feels bad if you are art in that scenario I definitely think he played this fight out well and we'll have an opportunity to watch it one more time so the heroic entrance comes in. I actually think Kogok had a great position on this fight. And you send the Renekton in on top of it to blow up the Ash. The problem is, is that that's not the fight win. This is not a comp that relies solely on an AD carry. Meanwhile, Art is doing everything he can to try and find a fight win here. He does so much and gets so many members so low. Gang forced to flash away. Steel forced to run away. 
And then in the end, he still has a Seros and an Evi to burn through. He finds one more kill, but... That's just such a tragedy for Art specifically, and... Is a bit unfortunate, and it's one of those matches that I definitely think... Hopefully, Art will be able to at least hold his head high that he played well for most of the split. And I, d I definitely think he's an 80 carry to be watching out for. Because he's put, trying to put so much work into this game. Meanwhile, Hachimecha just trying to pose, poke his head around his own neck of the woods, but... It looks like the camp, the campgrounds cancel, counselor is keeping an eye out for a yogi bear trying to get in and steal any jungle camps. That's just going to be DFM onto the Baron once more. And Rascal Jester, honestly, I don't even blame you if Hachimecha goes for a solo steal attempt onto this. But he's going to get a little bit of time locked up with Gang. That should be enough for the Dra or for the Baron to at least go down. And at this point, Rascal Jester disincentivized from going in. Nagi's going to be the one caught out. Flash dredge line should be able to enough to get him to safety. But an arrow's going to find his way onto the bear. The beautiful blast going hit is actually going to force out the ultimate from the Volibear. Meanwhile, Saros is doing what he can to help out his jungler. Keep members locked up on the other end of the fight there. But with Baron in tow, this is going to be one of the ways that this game possibly ends. Yeah. And DFM are going to be going all in here, trying to just get any play started up they can. As realistically, they have that luxury... Just this gold lead is, is already cresting into about a 10k advantage. They can pretty much do as they please, especially as the wave is going to be coming in on the bottom end of the map, so they have all the time in the world to make this play work. That's going to be an empowered on a, on a Kogkog. Beautiful dodge in the dredge line with the Hextech ultimatum as Kogkog's going to go golden to try and buy himself some time. But when you're using the ultimate defensively, there's not much of a team fight left for a Rascal Jester as Detonation Focus Me are looking to try and find their, their final wins in week seven here. That's going to be the ace coming out from DFM. And that's going to be game going over to DFM. Rascal Jester not going to find themselves too happy with this one. But DFM pulling this one out and ultimately setting themselves up for their first win of the week. Hopefully a little bit of a confidence boost for the side of Detonation Focus Me. And in the wake of that... They're going to need it going up against CGA, but GG's to both DFM and Rascal Jester. Kind of a hard game to really to really take if you are Rascal Jester. You do have a decent match coming up later on today versus Axis Gaming, so hopefully they'll be able to bounce back and find a win in that one. All of that being said, though, thank you all for tuning in. I am Dr. No. I do all of the English broadcasting for the LJL. I will be 